Hey everybody, and welcome back to AJ's Short Bus Adventure. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to do the front end brake job on a 2005 E450 Super Duty Short Bus. Now, keep in mind, I am not a licensed mechanic. I did do a lot of research prior to this, and I've been working on cars for a vast majority of my life. So I was completely comfortable with doing a project like this. If you've never worked on a car before and are about to tackle this job, I highly recommend having a licensed mechanic come and help you or somebody who does have experience doing said work. This is actually the side of the bus that was giving me the most problems. The brake pad is basically stuck rubbing against the rotor and you can actually see the lines from its from it rubbing up against there for so long embedded into the side of the rotor now what i'm showing here is how much of a pain it is to try to get these bolts off um with just a ratchet and a socket it is extremely difficult I highly recommend purchasing an impact wrench. That is what I did. I bought a Bauer impact wrench from Harbor Freight for $79.99. And it was one of the best investments I ever made. Right here, you can see I'm turning the wheel for it because it's a little bit large and I needed more room to be able to get the impact wrench behind the wheel and get those two bolts out. There are four bolts on the, on the inside of the caliper. Two of them are hex screws and two of them have socket heads on the top. The hex screws will not fit socket heads. So if it's not going on, you're probably on the wrong one. What I'm doing here right now is taking the third bolt off after I remove the caliper. There is a third bolt that holds the tube that goes to the caliper. That's where the brake fluid comes in. I have to pop that off because I'm just going to be replacing the whole caliper and rotor. Inside the center of the rotor is a little cotter pin and behind that is a little bolt. Don't be alarmed when you take that bolt off. You're probably not going to even need to loosen it. I just took it off with my fingertips. That center bolt does not need to be tightened down to an extreme. You can just hand tighten it in when you put it back on. There are two wheel bearings. One goes on the front side of the rotor. The other goes on the back side of the rotor. It's easiest to put the back side on first. And there's a little seal that goes over the back side of the rotor to keep that wheel bearing in. So when I bought the parts from AutoZone, the man behind the counter had told me the best way about putting the grease on the wheel bearings is to just put a huge pile in your hand and roll the wheel bearing through it and just really coat that wheel bearing with grease. I used a high heat resistant wheel bearing grease for mine. You're going to want to do the same because these parts will get hot, especially when you're driving a lot. Then you take the seal and you push it down. I used a hammer and just lightly tapped it in. You don't want to tap too hard because you will run the risk of damaging that seal and that you don't want to do. After I get the wheel bearing in, I'm going to go through and spray the back side with some brake cleaner. That gets all grease and junk off the back side of that rotor. You really want to make sure that rotor is nice and clean before you get everything all done because if the brake pads catch grease on that rotor, it can cause it to slip. Now, I wouldn't recommend putting the rotor on with the front wheel bearing in like I just did because it's likely going to pop out. So I cleaned it off, cleaned all the little rocks off there that got on it. And the, the secret to putting this rotor on and getting it to stay f up is to push that wheel bearing in and kind of hold the rotor there so it stays balanced. And that'll give you enough time that you can get the washer on and that little nut. It just needs to be hand tightened on all the way and then a cotter pin goes in the center hole inside there 
and you definitely want to re make sure you put a new cotter pin back in. That That is important. Next step, clean the front side of the rotor again with brake cleaner and go into the calipers. So there's two parts to the caliper for my particular bus. There is the caliper and there's the bracket. In my hands right now is the bracket. I am putting the brake pad shims onto that bracket. It is very important to make sure you are putting those brake pad shims on correctly because if you put them on incorrectly, they run the risk of dragging against the rotor and that will cause damages. Once you got the brake pads secured inside the bracket, you put the caliper back on and tighten up the two hex bolts that are on that other side. Tighten those two bolts up and put the brake line back on. Make sure that's tight. Now, you wanna, once you're done, you're gonna want to do some test spins with the wheel to make sure you're not hearing or feeling any kind of obstruction because that would be a bad thing. Then you just put the tire back on. Now, if you've never changed a tire before, when you're putting a tire back on, you always want to screw the lug nuts on in a star pattern. So you start from one side and you skip every other bolt. For me, I always kind of do it like 12, 6, 9, and 3, and then I do the middle one. This is going to keep the tire going on straight and keep it from wobbling. That is very important to do it that way. I'm using the impact wrench just to get it up nice and snug to the tire. And then you're going to want to lower your vehicle slowly. You don't want to just drop it because that's not good for any of the parts that your bus sits on or your vehicle sits on. And then you just want to go through and tighten the lug nuts and just give, make, give them one more turn to the right and make sure they are nice and tight and not going to slide off on you while you're driving. Thank you all for checking out the video on how to change your front brakes on an E450 Ford Super Duty short bus. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's anything you would like me to change in the upcoming how-to videos, please let me know. I will try to have more camera footage, better camera angles to be more specific than it was this time. And feel free to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all of our latest adventures as well as some plenty of do-it-yourself type of videos.